Level zero. It always begins with something barely noticeable. You step outside and the sky is not quite blue anymore. It looks filtered, like someone turned the saturation down without asking. The horizon fades into a warm haze and the air feels a little heavy almost chalky. If you breathe deeply, you taste something strangely dry in the back of your throat. It is not painful, just inconvenient, like nature sprinkled spice into the wind. What you are looking at is blowing dust, the shy first stage of a storm that has not decided how serious it wants to be. At this level, visibility drops from a clear 10 kilometers to somewhere closer to one. It is still safe to drive and walk around, and most people do not even think twice about it. In fact, many blame their blurry vision on needing new glasses before realizing the world is actually fading in front of them. Blowing dust usually forms when warm surface winds sweep across dry soil and scoop tiny particles of dirt and clay into the air. You will see this in desert regions like the Sahara or the Middle East, but it also happens in places you would not expect. Texas, northern China, the heart of Australia, even parts of Spain have experienced this dusty preview. Farmers dread it because it can strip valuable topsoil right off their land. To the rest of us, it just feels like someone put a giant smudge across the landscape. Historically, people underestimated this early warning. During the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, blowing dust was dismissed as harmless at first. Families thought it was just another windy afternoon. Then the haze kept returning. It grew thicker, darker, heavier, until it turned into storms that swallowed entire towns. A calm beginning fooled everyone. At level zero, the danger is mostly invisible. It irritates sensitive lungs, causes mild breathing discomfort, and reduces air quality enough that some people start coughing without knowing why. The wind seems normal, the sun is still shining, yet the world feels different. Dust hangs above the ground like it is waiting. And that is the clue. Blowing dust is not the problem. It is the whisper before the shout. When the first gritty particles float through the air, they do not just make you squint. They warn you that the wind is getting hungry. What comes next is stronger, sharper, and far more personal. Because once that dust turns into sand, you begin to feel the storm. Level 1 now the storm starts to get a personality. Blowing dust was just a hazy inconvenience, but blowing sand is the moment the wind decides to get physical. You step outside and the air is not just dirty anymore, it has texture. Every gust comes with tiny pinches against your skin, like someone throwing microscopic grains of rice at your face for fun. It is nature's way of saying, hey, look at me. Visibility drops further, shrinking from one kilometer down toward 500 meters, and suddenly the horizon looks fuzzy, almost melting into the sky. If you are wearing shorts, you regret it instantly. Sand sneaks into your shoes, your pockets, your backpack, and even manages to get inside places you did not know were open. Hair becomes a sand storage unit, and if you forget sunglasses, your eyes become tiny sand collectors that make you instantly question your life decisions. Scientifically, this happens because the wind is now strong enough to lift heavier grains off the ground. Unlike dust, sand particles do not float gently. They bounce and skip across the surface in a process called saltation. Each grain slams into the ground, launching the next one upward, creating a chain reaction of painful little projectiles. It is like the Earth decided to weaponize the beach. You can witness this level in places like the Arabian Peninsula, northern China, and parts of Egypt, but it is common in the American Southwest, too. The town of Yuma in Arizona, for example, often deals with sand blasting through the streets like invisible grit guns. During mild episodes, people still go shopping, walk the dog, or even jog through it, pretending it is just a slightly aggressive breeze, but give it a little time and blowing sand becomes a warning sign for everyone who pays attention. Even history teaches us not to shrug this off. Travelers crossing the Sahara centuries ago knew when the wind shifted and the sand began to sting, it was time to pack up and brace for something bigger. Merchants would pull scarves tight and urge their caravans forward because early sand was never just a nuisance. It was a message. At level one, you can still move around, still drive, and still breathe without panic, but the storm has officially touched you, and once the wind stops playing, and decides to lift more than just grains, the world turns from inconvenient to dangerous. The dust will not just sting, it will swallow everything in sight. Level 2. Now the storm stops teasing. This is where things stop being mildly annoying and start getting genuinely serious. You are no longer just wiping grit off your clothes or blinking sand out of your eyes. At level 2, the air itself becomes the enemy. You look outside and it feels like the world has been erased with a dirty sponge. Visibility crashes down from 500 meters to just 200. Everything ahead of you disappears into a thick wall of swirling brown and gray. The sun turns into a dim spotlight behind a cloud of chaos. This is no longer a few gusts of wind and a little airborne sand. This is a full-scale dust storm. Scientifically, what makes a dust storm different is intensity. The winds are now strong enough to lift fine dust and sand high into the atmosphere, sometimes reaching several kilometers up. 
Entire landscapes are engulfed. The storm moves like a slow motion avalanche in the sky, and if you are caught in it, you are suddenly in a world that feels alien and unstable. Driving becomes a gamble. Headlights barely pierce the haze. Road lines vanish. And those sand grains? Now they are slamming into windshields with enough force to leave tiny chips. Airports often cancel flights at this level. Breathing becomes harder, especially for anyone with asthma or lung issues. People start wearing masks not just for protection, but for survival. In 2011, a dust storm swept through Phoenix, Arizona, so massive it made headlines around the world. It towered over skyscrapers, blanketed the entire city, and forced everything to stop. Traffic froze. Lights dimmed. For a moment, it looked like the end of the world, and that was just a level two. There is also history behind this kind of storm. During the Dust Bowl in the 1930s, dust storms like these rolled across the Great Plains, turning day into night. Eyewitnesses described it as a black blizzard. Entire families huddled indoors, stuffing wet rags under doors to keep the dust out. Some failed. The dust still crept in, coating floors, beds, and lungs. At level two, the storm does not just touch you. It surrounds you. It buries your view, your direction, even your sense of time. And as the wind continues to climb and the visibility drops even further, you start to wonder what happens when the storm stops being just dangerous and starts being deadly. Level 3 at this point, the storm doesn't just arrive, it crashes in. Gone is the playful sting of flying sand or the gentle haze of dust. Now, every gust feels like the wind has teeth. Visibility plummets below 200 meters, sometimes dipping as low as 50. That means entire buildings disappear before your eyes. Cars vanish mid-turn. Even people just a few steps ahead blur into shadows. This is a moderate sandstorm, and nothing about it feels moderate when you're standing in it. The air turns thick with grinding particles. Each grain of sand is now moving fast enough to leave marks on metal and rip through exposed skin, like nature's version of sandpaper. Walking into the storm feels like stepping into a sandblaster. It is loud, violent, and constant. The wind howls like an engine that will not shut off, and anything not nailed down gets picked up and tossed around. Trash cans, tree branches, signs, even chunks of fencing become sudden projectiles. At this level, outdoor travel becomes nearly impossible. Roads are dangerous. Pilots are grounded. Even walking feels like a challenge. Eyes water. Ears fill with grit. Breathing gets painful. And there is no clear end in sight, just an endless orange fog that blurs time and place. Places like northern China, parts of Mongolia, and large stretches of the Middle East know this level well. Cities like Urumqi and Tehran have seen streets go from calm to chaos in under an hour. Residents rush indoors, windows shut tight, air purifiers struggle to keep up. Emergency broadcasts advise staying inside, but for those caught out, shelter is often whatever they can find. A gas station, a parked bus, anything to shield themselves from the biting wind. In 2015, a sandstorm of this level swept across Iraq and Syria, grounding flights and sending thousands to hospitals with respiratory issues. It was sudden, it was aggressive, and it was a reminder that at this level, the storm is no longer something you watch, it is something you survive. Moderate sandstorms are where control begins to slip away. And just when you think it cannot get worse, the wind shifts again. The sand comes faster. The world narrows further. Because once visibility drops below 50 meters and the storm digs in even deeper, you enter a zone where danger becomes constant and escape becomes nearly impossible. Level 4 this is where the storm stops testing you and starts trying to break you. At level 4, visibility drops below 50 meters and keeps falling. In some areas, you are lucky to see 10 meters ahead. It no longer feels like a weather event. It feels like a siege. The wind now tears through the landscape with brutal force. Sand slams into skin like glass shards. Exposed hands and faces burn within minutes. Every breath carries thousands of microscopic grains, scratching the throat and choking the lungs. This is the kind of storm that forces everything to shut down. Roads are blocked, power lines snap, and emergency services struggle just to move. Severe sandstorms form when strong pressure systems generate sustained winds across dry, barren ground. The longer these winds last, the more sand they lift, and the thicker the storm becomes. And this level does not just look scary, it damages everything it touches. Vehicles stall because air filters clog almost instantly. Engines overheat or shut down, electronics jam, solar panels, HVAC units, even water systems can be rendered useless. Cities have to go into lockdown mode. In places like Turpan, China, or parts of Saudi Arabia, it is common to see buildings draped in protective sheets or wrapped in plastic during sandstorm season. People do not just prepare for the storm, they brace for survival. In 2018, a severe sandstorm rolled across parts of Rajasthan, India, with wind speeds reaching over 100 kilometers per hour. It knocked out power to entire districts and destroyed hundreds of homes. At least 100 people lost their lives in a matter of hours. The storm came in the night and left behind a trail of collapsed buildings and buried roads. You cannot just wait out a level 4 storm outside. Without proper protection, the wind and sand can peel skin, cause eye injuries, and lead to serious respiratory distress. 
Even indoors, air leaks through cracks and windows. Filters must run constantly, and sometimes they still are not enough. This is the moment when people realize a sandstorm is not just a nuisance or a dramatic sky. It is a natural force with the power to stop modern life completely. And if you think this is the peak, it is not. Because when the sand gets thicker, the air turns darker, and the storm becomes heavy enough to block the sun itself, it crosses into something far more terrifying. Level 5 at level 5, the storm stops looking like weather and starts looking like the end of the world. Visibility is nearly gone, falling under 10 meters. In some moments, you cannot even see your own feet. The sun disappears completely. The sky turns black, or sometimes a deep blood red, depending on where the sand is coming from. It feels like nightfall at noon. This is called a dense sandstorm sometimes referred to as a black sandstorm, and it is exactly as terrifying as it sounds. The storm is now so thick, light cannot break through. Entire cities vanish behind walls of sand. Skyscrapers fade like ghosts. Streetlights struggle to shine through the dust, flickering in and out like signals from another world. The air becomes a weapon. Sand no longer stings. It slams into you. The wind pushes hard enough to knock people off their feet. Windows crack, doors rattle, and those who are outside without protection risk suffocating. In these conditions, breathing unfiltered air is not just uncomfortable, it is dangerous. Fine particles fill the lungs and can cause long-term damage in just a few hours. The air becomes hot, dry, and heavy. It dries out the eyes, burns the throat, and sinks deep into the body. People cover their faces with scarves, towels, whatever they can grab. But even indoors, the storm finds its way in, through vents, through keyholes, through any crack it can reach. In 2021, parts of Mongolia and northern China were hit by one of the most intense black sandstorms in decades. The capital city of Beijing vanished under a thick wall of dust. Planes were grounded, roads were abandoned, emergency alerts lit up every screen. Even satellite images showed the storm stretching for hundreds of kilometers, blotting out everything below. At this level, entire infrastructures falter, power fails, water supplies are threatened, hospitals fill with people struggling to breathe, schools shut down, businesses close, and life, for a brief but brutal moment, becomes survival. Dense sandstorms do not pass quietly. They bury what they touch, and when the wind finally settles, entire landscapes can look unrecognizable. But even even this level is not the worst. There is still one stage left, a rare and devastating event where the sandstorm swells to a size so massive it can cross countries and crash through continents, a level where even satellites struggle to capture its full scale. Level 6 this is the final level, the point where the word sandstorm no longer feels big enough. At level 6, we are talking about super sandstorms, events so massive they stretch across entire regions, sometimes crossing borders and lasting for days. This is the most extreme sandstorm Earth can produce. Visibility drops to almost nothing. In many cases, you cannot see beyond two meters and sometimes not even your own hands. The storm does not just roll in, it towers. Giant walls of sand hundreds of meters high race across the horizon like an invading army. They look like something out of science fiction, but they are very real. And once they arrive, there is no escape. Flights are grounded. Highways shut down. Power grids flicker and fail. Satellites lose track of what is happening below because the storm is simply too large to see through. At this scale, the storm becomes a force of environmental disruption. It buries infrastructure. Power lines collapse under the weight of wind-driven debris. Solar panels stop functioning. Water sources are contaminated. Electronics jam. Communication towers go silent. It is not just a weather event anymore. It is a crisis. One of the most striking examples came in 2022, when a super sandstorm blanketed large parts of the Middle East, stretching from Iraq to the Gulf states. Airports closed, cities turned orange, hospitals were overwhelmed with people suffering from respiratory issues. The storm was so vast it appeared clearly in global satellite imagery, covering multiple countries in a single sweep. Historically, events like this have left permanent marks. In the Sahara, entire villages have vanished beneath layers of sand. Trade routes once relied upon for centuries were erased in days. Even ancient civilizations have been disrupted by storms of this scale. The Earth remembers them in layers of sediment, proof of battles fought against the wind. At level 6, no one is safe outdoors, not even machines. Engines choke, filters clog, glass shatters, animals flee or collapse. Human activity grinds to a halt. It is total disruption. A natural blackout powered by nothing more than sand, wind, and time. And once it passes, the silence feels surreal. Streets buried, skylines erased, lives changed. Because when a super sandstorm hits, it does not just move through. It leaves its mark forever.